In 2004, breaking new ground was passed as a policy by the government. All provinces and municipalities were directed to pilot this new approach, which meant building houses closer to places of work for different income groups, and thus creating integrated, sustainable settlements where the rich and poor live side by side and enjoy equal or similar economic opportunities. The Western Area of Urua Mega Project is a realization of that dream. It is a development in the heart of the West Rand mining area, which is a combination of different housing options, including high standard, fully subsidized housing, bonded housing, social housing, and rental units. The project goal at inception was to eradicate the informal settlement of Beckersdale. However, other informal settlements have since been incorporated. These include Waterworks, Zirbekom, Fenter Spos, and Tusanang, upgrading this project into a major development that will yield up to 16,000 houses. Let's meet some of the people who will be moving in here. Umakulu ukalile uku ngaboni on 2014. And these were as a number of swekili na because I could show it in the kukutune swekili. Kutu a high blood, I think so, you know, by high blood. A kafun ukuya paya a toilet a gasabon, wati masim to then get packet, a packet in the associates and omsebezi ke kumneke packet is our kobesi and the swekalela a toilet. Uma kulu pazani swang ukhlale mkhukhwini because ku ukiyabanda and amathambo akhaya qaqamba xa ihlele apha so unethube ninge akhale athi simbeke phandle akalelanga kakuhle sibe thina sicinge into basimbeke kakuhle bedi ukungahambi wenzwayi ngcele une arthritis umbane awukho apha sihleli ngaphandleni kombane ibubunzima esinabo thi nawo bo ngoba bunzima ukuthaja amafoni amanzi ke siwakha apha yaqa lele siye sithume sibone ke i-river sihambe sokukhamaza ukuze sibe namanzi eziyadi nzethu sinokhansela apha ukuthiwa ngokola ebetha nje ukuze apha utati ukole mbuzi ntoba ingaba lo mama namenza ukuba apply la indlela sathi ke thina kakhange simse ekhoka stop because ungulo umuntu ungumthwalo ufuneke siqeshe imoto so wamzela ngokwakhe wafunisa into kokuba ngaba amakomiti akhe eza azobhalisela uma khulu indawo yokuhlala so wambhalisa kukhansela for ukum apply la indlela i think ikhange ithathe i2 years kuma khulu khona sibanishi kakhulu and a bong, a baban to Abananda with Oxal, and a baban to Abasabins. So, Bunzima Kuma Kurutuba was spent a Maliake pension. O Gavin, the Abasan Kasu Pansi of over ninety six, or two thousand and two, or two thousand and eight. So, Nalapa, Bonsu Kasu, Bonga Bad of Fonoba Kuman and Doni is the first of Nemdo as who apply in the body. Sometimes <laughs> Life in a band to You know, it's important for us to look after our elders and ensure their well being. But it's equally important for us to take care of our youth. They are the future. Let's meet Tabi, so a young man who, despite the odds, is beginning to blossom. I'm 19 years old. I have two siblings, Kahiso and Khaltang. Kahiso is 13, Khaltang is 6. Repeti, most of my people are going to be in the Three years ago, my mother died. We had to be taken care of by my grandparents. It was a tough time because I, I couldn't deal with school and accepting that she was gone, but we've tried to like, forget about what, what has happened and like, think of it in, in a more positive way. 
when my mom was still alive, anything I wanted, I would get it. Like, quick, quick. It has been quite a challenge, like the financial side of things. So, yeah. And like, I, I, I had to learn to, to be responsible of my own money. I failed my last year, 2016. Then this year, I got accepted to University University for medicine. Then I decided to actually do medicine. Changing from Kasi lifestyle to Bramfontein lifestyle is like it's, it's it's been quite hard because that side things uh, move much more faster than this side. I'm gonna go apply it in 2002. We were worried whether or not we were going to get the house. Then suddenly, recently, I, I, I got a phone call from the Department of Human Settlements telling me that uh, we are going to receive the house. Because, like, we are going to at the same time. So, like, it's going to uh, make me or make me and my siblings more responsible in life because So, like, we are going to more about responsibility than anything else. What a remarkable young man. I'm sure he'll carve a great future for himself and the family. pinky. <laughs> Mama ke emeli, amon tunka mo padula bali fo panaba hai pa itel. Nagdula ko bekes dal, nagsat swaga antla ba nagdula kahagamu kuku apula dina nagnelo kiti pool nagsat kolo kreta fuma na matu jalo kahagamu fuma nso. Hai salga fisa mo upelo bu chin chile kaubaning ha nagtua ko mikukungwa. And Le ha se a go betse ha o na motho a tlatla a go o tlatla a re ntsa go bane ke hamme Receiving a house is only the beginning of this beautiful journey which involves a few responsibilities like getting a title deed Let's hear more about that A title deed is a guarantee of tenure for land that you own particularly where a house is built or even if it's vacant land. So if I have a title deed, nobody can take my piece of land away from me. To apply for a title deed, a, a person can go to the deeds office, but you can't do it as a person because it's a legal process. You need a qualified conveyancer who has the understanding of how it works to help you apply for a title deed. The first time register doesn't have to pay a cent. With the um, subsidy amount, locked in it is the cost of transfer of the piece of land. So when you are approved the subsidy, what is also approved is the cost of the transfer of land. So for our beneficiaries that don't pay us and government pays for it. At the moment we're dealing with a backlog. The biggest backlog in terms of title deeds is in Houghton, over 200,000. Partly because we still have properties that are in townships that are not registered. Now, part of the process of uh, registering a title deed, there has to be confirmation that the township has been proclaimed or registered. If it hasn't been registered, it's, it's impossible to do that. Two, we also have a backlog because people who are located houses, before title deeds could be processed, they sold to those houses. Uh, three, it's also properties that were invaded, where 
people moved into properties that were not allocated to them, which makes it difficult to do the actual transfers. So there are numerous uh, reasons why certain properties have not yet been transferred, but that is what we are seized with as a department to fast track them. The benefits of having a title deed is that uh, you can pass it on as an asset to your offspring or beneficiaries. Uh, should you pass on, it could be in your will too. You could use that as a guarantor if you want to go into business because it is a tangible asset that has value. And or if you want to relocate, you can sell it and gain money out of it. But you need to comply in that instance. You must have stayed in that house for no less than eight years. Considering the benefits and legal protection that come with a title deed, it's totally worth it to get one. Protect your house, which is an asset, and leave a legacy for future generations. When we come back, see what it really feels like to hold a title deed in your hand. The 13th of July, 2017, is a day that will be etched in the memories of some residents of Burwa and Western area for the rest of their lives. It's a remarkable day because some of them will own houses for the very first time in their lives and others will receive their title deeds. Let's see how the day goes. This is uh, one of those pilot projects that we wanting to put out to show whether or not we're succeeding in our integrated human settlements. We're hoping that every province will have two or more of these on show so that we learn from them what works and what doesn't work. This one has learned a lot from Cosmos City and it's a great success. We have a lot of people complaining about what's going wrong, but what can they think about that can happen, what they can do to help? You know, the ANC has adopted for years now the slogan, um, together we can, we can do it better. And the together part is carefully crafted that we can do it together because we need the people to be part and parcel of what we do. At the neighborhood, we would like them to make it possible for us to, to, to get on. Sometimes they block us and our projects are blocked because they have one problem or another. There are other ways in which we can solve those problems without holding back the development that would benefit other people. Yeah. People are talking about getting land back. Actually, human settlements giving is land. giving land back Absolutely. to people. I think that's an incredible... It, actually, it's not just giving land, it's giving them prime land. The places where we build in is prime land, and we couldn't do better. Not only that, we provide them with infrastructure. Yes. If we give them land wherever it is, uh, the city is not required to provide them with infrastructure. But where we give them houses, they have infrastructure, they have all the facilities that they need. And with these huge mega projects, now you're talking social amenities, economic absolutely, amenities. Absolutely. In this project that we have, where we're building 16,000 houses, we're also building a university. We're building 14 schools, we're building clinics, we're building, I mean, it, it, the, the list just goes on. It is amazing. Now, if you put the totality of the land that we've used, you can see that the total value that we're giving to the people of Western area, the country would never be able to give it to any, any yeah. community. Yeah. But we're giving it back to them. 
So you are only three? Yeah, it is the Okay, for my What was special about today for you? I think it was uh, my mom giving us, like, finally fulfilling the, the, her promise of giving us a home. Because that's what she, she's always wanted before she, she, she passed on. And um, in your view, how does this impact your life? A lot of people have been saying today, I must take care of my siblings. Like, this, this taking care of this home will be like a way of actually keeping that promise. Yeah. There's a temptation to kind of make quick cash when you own something like this. Did it cross your mind? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And what did you end up uh, thinking when you thought, you know, I could sell this and make this much money? We actually need this more than the money because money is temporary. Oh, so this is temporary. This, this is permanent. This is property. Oh, yeah. So. Yes, because the beauty about property in a prime area like a city is that 10 years down the line, it has doubled in price. 15 years down the line, it's tripled. And you can get a loan from it, you can go to school through it, but it stays there. Uh, whereas you get your money now, it's very quick and it's very true. It's done in no time at all. I'm glad you came to that conclusion because it tells me when you say this thing has grown me, that you really have. Because one of the things you need to understand is the value of assets versus cash. So how are you feeling right now? I feel very happy, uh, overwhelmed. All day, I've been smiling left and right. Like, I I'm pretty sure if I, felt, if, if I smiled any longer for like the next hour, if I, if I kept on smiling, my muscle would hurt. <laughs> I know that's kind of impossible, but yeah. yeah. Hey, Mr. Mashatile, welcome to Breaking New Ground. Thanks for giving us your time. Thank you very much. Yeah. This might be a hard one, but I'm sure you've, you've given it some thought. But what were the learnings mainly uh, out of the housing delivery protest that took place recently in Gauteng? Well, the most important thing for us was that communities wanted to engage with us. And once we started engaging with them, we said to them, look, form yourself into proper steering committees, representing your communities will engage with you. Um, some of you, we are not even sure if you are on our waiting list, we will come to your area and start registering people, which is what we did. Yeah. And I think that gave a lot of excitement to people that government is listening. We find that the next big problem, once you've done that, engaged, given a house, is that people then illegally sell these houses. We try and educate them to say, don't do this. Um, we, we have now said to people, if you get into an RDP house, stay at least for 10 years. Finally, I mean, a simple thing, we call it a spot part of BNG. What would you like to say? to beneficiaries of houses, those who are waiting, those who have their house? What would be a, a one message to all who's, and those who are watching, of course? Well, we say to, if you are now waiting, list, be patient. We will work with you. We are prioritizing people who have applied as early as 1996. We are prioritizing elderly people, people with disabilities. We are also providing houses to military veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, so all people need to know is to engage with municipalities. Don't go and invade land, work with us. If there's a land nearby, if the community identified the land, they must come back to us. Let's plan together. Ms. Mahaling, thank you so much for joining us on Breaking New Ground. It's my absolute pleasure. Yes, thank you, Eric. Yes, yes. Let's start by you telling us how your company get involved with this project. Crimson King came in as a private a partner into this whole initiative and then joined hands with government by offering the land that we are currently developing on. One could have argued that you gave the department a bit of a problem. Now this is Dolomitic land, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. We're building on Dolomitic land. And, and let's start by you explaining what Dolomitic land is. 
What okay. does that mean? As you would know, the West Rand region, it's a mining town. Then when we're talking about Dolomite, it's, 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 it's a condition that lies under, under surface. So what happens is that as it rains, the water particles that are forming underneath the ground, and as it rains, as it rains, it becomes more and more. At any minute, at any given time, a sinkhole could form. A sinkhole meaning that you could find your house disappearing, just like that because of the water particles that are underneath the ground. So that must have been one of the biggest challenges of, of developing here. Correct. How did you solve it? How did you solve that? Is, has it been solved? It has been solved. There are some legislative requirements that we have to follow when we're building on Dolomite and we are strict on that. The NHBRC and other building regulations are very strict on that. How far along is the project? And when do you see yourselves handing it over and saying, now it's done? We're planning to deliver 16,000 units and we're planning to be here for the next coming five years. In her 2017 budget speech, Minister Sisulu stated that the environment determines a people's consciousness and that a decent environment creates a different perspective, a different affirmation of self. The Department of Human Settlements is not just providing houses, but it's also building healthy communities where people can thrive. It's up to us as citizens to make sure that this beautiful reality lasts. This has been another episode of Breaking New Ground. I'm Eric Meary.